Hi, and welcome to Season 2 of That's Roddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What created the Potomsky Crater? Who was involved in the 1963 Great Train Robbery? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts and references for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about the theft of the Tucker or Teddy Cross. Teddy Tucker was a Bermudan marine explorer. He said, I picked it up and the sun hit the emeralds. It was just like they had lights in them. Tucker had been exploring a shipwreck believed to be the San Pedro when he found the cross. The San Pedro was a Spanish galleon and part of a Spanish armada carrying treasure from Cartagena, Colombia to Cardiz, Spain. It sank in 1594. This is the oldest shipwreck discovered in Bermuda. Teddy Tucker was an accomplished diver. He had created millions in wealth for Bermuda from the metal found during his salvage dives. His finds came from more than 100 shipwrecks around Bermuda. He received the Distinguished Service Award from the Underwater Society of America. He also received the Member of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire Medal. Teddy Tucker was exploring the wreck in 1955 when he found the cross. The cross is made of 22 karat gold and encrusted with seven Colombian emeralds. Each arm and the base had rings on them, and hanging from each ring was a golden nail representing the crucifixion. There was a mysterious empty cavity in the back of the cross. No one knows what might have once filled this cavity. At the time Tucker found the cross, it's estimated to have been worth over $200,000. Today, it would be worth over $2 million. He found other treasures at this time, but none were quite as important or as valuable. In 1997, the cross was considered to be the most single, valuable object recovered from a shipwreck. It's an amazing bit of chance that Tucker even found the cross, and he originally believed it to be of Indian origin due to its simple design. The first time Tucker visited the site where he found the cross was in 1951. He found a cannon on the ocean floor, which he sold to the Bermudan government. He returned to the site after completing other projects, and that's when he found the cross. Tucker described how he found the cross in How I Found the Cross. He said, By September 1955, and the weather was getting worse. Then, on the seventh day of diving, a Sunday, I found the greatest single object of all. Eager to work faster, I took a water hose down to the bottom and turned on the jet to blast sand from the area below the brain coral. After carving a deep hole, I turned the jet off. When the debris settled, my eyes fell on a golden cross lying face down in the sand. I picked it up and turned it over. Awestruck, I counted the large green emeralds on its face. There were seven of them, each as big as a musket ball. From small rings on the arms of the cross hung tiny gold nails representing the nails in Christ's hands. And at the foot was the ring for a third which had been lost. The ornate carving, while beautiful, was somewhat crude, indicating the Indians had made the cross. It remains my most treasured discovery. In 1959, Tucker sold the cross to the Bermudan government, saying he wanted it to stay on the island. Up to this point, it had been kept in the Bermuda Aquarium, Museum, and Zoo, which was run by Tucker and his wife. They sold the entire museum, including the cross, to the government for $100,000. The government moved the cross to the Maritime Museum. On February 16, 1975, Queen Elizabeth was set to visit Bermuda and the museum for its opening. Shortly before opening, it was discovered that the cross had been stolen. In its place was a near-perfect replica made of cheap plaster or plastic. This replica cross is valued at $250,000 today. No one knows when the switch was made. The closest anyone can get is that the cross had been stolen sometime in the previous five years. The Queen's visit complicated things. Initially, the police were too busy focusing on protecting the Queen to put any effort into finding the missing cross. 
When they were able to begin investigating, they called in all the help they could get. Eventually, the FBI, Scotland Yard, and Interpol were all helping investigate. None of these agents found any leads. The Bermudan government believes the theft was an inside job. Investigators also believe the cross has been dismantled. They believe the gold has been melted down and the emeralds were sold on the black market. One thing is for sure. The thief was a skilled artist. The reproduction quality of the replacement cross was very high. Many years after the theft of the cross, in 2014, author B.R. Bentley wrote the book The Cross, which is a fictional story about the theft of the cross and what the mysterious cavity in it was for. He followed that book with The Bermuda Key in 2015. To this day, the cross has never been recovered. Who stole the Tucker Cross? Was it really an inside job? What was that mysterious cavity actually for? What did they do with the cross? What do you think? Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ready Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ready Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.